Today's lesson 4.4, rates of change in polynomial functions. So the first thing you need to remember is that if you have a polynomial function, the rate of change is going to be different as you go around the curve of the function. So think about um, a polynomial function. Uh, let me just sketch you one something over here. Let's say have something just that looks like this. Okay, so it's probably a cubic function. And I can see that the rate of change, if I drew a series of tangent lines to this graph, would be different as I go around the curve, right? Every tangent line has a different slope. So the rate of change is going to be different as we move around the curve. So we talked about two things previously in Chapter 2 on rates of change, and that is the average rate of change being the slope of a secant. Remember, a secant line is just any line that joins two points on your graph. So if I took these two points and I drew a line, that would be a secant line. The instantaneous rate of change is the slope of a tangent. Now these are concepts that are critical for your understanding of calculus. So all these little lessons at the end of every chapter when they do rates of change, and there will be a rate of change section at the end of each chapter as you go through this textbook, and that is because they're warming you up for calculus. So instead of going over this, I'm going to do a few examples from the textbook that will help to illustrate what they're trying to get across in this section. So it's really just a repeat of what you did in chapter two, only using polynomial functions. So here's an example they give you. It's obviously a quadratic. You know where the vertex is, 2 and minus 2. You know it's concave up. It's vertically stretched by a factor of 3. The question says find the average rate of change for x between 2 and 6. So let's begin initially by making just a quick sketch of it so that we can discuss a little bit about rates of change to this for this graph as we go around. So I'm going to make a quick little sketch here. So I have 1, 2, and minus 2, minus 2. What's the y-intercept? Can we plug in x is 0? And we would have 12 minus 2 is 10. So it's going to be way up here somewhere. It's not even going to be on my graph. Okay, so it's going to go something like this, right? There we go. So it says find the average rate of change. So remember the average rate of change, all you have to do is pick two points. And they ask between two and six. So I need to know what are the y coordinates. So that's first thing, find the y coordinates because I'm doing slope, that's it. You did it in grade nine, you can do it now. So what's f at two? I need f at two and I'm going to need f at 6. So I can have two sets of coordinates, which I will use to find the slope. So f at 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. Oh, great. 0 squared, 0. So 2 and minus 2. So I'm going to do 2 minus 2. And it's a good idea to write these points out, because then you know how to do the slope. f at 6. 6 minus 2 is 4 squared is 16 times 3 is 48 minus 2 is 46. So I have 6 and 46. So now that I have these two points, I can find the average rate of change. So I'm going to write average rate of change is going to be equal to the slope between these two points. So you can do it in any order you want. I'm going to do 46 minus minus 2. Don't forget the minus minuses or you'll get wrong numbers over 6 minus 2. 46 minus minus 2 is 48 divided by 4 equals 12. So that says between 2 and 6. So this was um, 2 here and 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So somewhere up here I have a steep line, a slope of 12. Okay. So that's how you find average rate of change. So don't forget, all you have to do here is to find the slope between two points, find the y-coordinates, and you're off to the races. 
Okay, another one that's just a little bit different. Okay, now the other thing, sorry, before I turn the page, is that you should understand what the difference is in the, in the rates of change as we go around this curve. So if I were to draw a series of tangent lines to this graph, you would see that this tangent line is going to be negative, it's going to be very steep, but as I approach this vertex, the tangent lines are going to get less steep until the slope is zero at the vertex here. Okay, so anytime you have a change in direction or a maximum or a minimum value, you will have zero slope. That's also a very important concept when you're doing calculus to find places of zero slope. Now, as soon as we go around the other side here, you can see the slope is, I don't know, maybe it's three here. And then as you go up, the slope is going to get steeper. Okay, so important points to understand is the change. These are positive slopes on this side of my graph and negative slopes on this side. And zero slope here. Okay, so important for you to understand how the slopes go. Okay, we're going to flip over and we're going to do an example from number nine. And let's see if I make sure I get this so you can see it. So it says f and x equals 3x squared minus 4x minus 1. Estimate the slope when x equals 1. Okay, now this time again we have an equation. So remember when you had an equation to find the, um, the slope. So if I'm going to estimate the slope, they always say estimate because until you're using calculus, you don't know the exact slope. Calculus is really easy and sometimes I show my students little tricks to use calculus um, to check their answers because you're not supposed to know that yet. And maybe I'll do that in a minute here. Okay, I want to estimate the slope where x is equal to 1. Okay, so that means I need to find the slope. So I'm going to say the slope of the, well, it's going to be a tangent. So I'm going to just say slope of tangent or instantaneous rate of change, right? You're estimating it. So the slope of the tangent, maybe even EST here for estimate, it's going to be, it's again, it's just an equation. So it's F at, so X plus H minus F at X over H. Now, remember this from chapter two, what we're doing is we're making the h really, really small. So the slope, when x is equal to 1, is going to be equal to the function at 1, and we're going to take a small interval. So 1.001 minus f at 1 over 1.001 minus 1, right? So this is my h. What I've added, I've added in 0 0.001. So if you do that entire calculation, and I, I did it just before I started, so I'm just going to pull up some numbers here because it's it's calculator work, right? You can't do this in your head. And it comes out to, well, it comes out to approximately 2. And I'm going to show you how to do the calculus on this because it's, so much easier. So it's approximately two. I think you end up with like 2.001 or something. So don't forget your approximately equal to sign. So that's just plugging that into this equation here, right? F at one is three minus five is minus two. So minus minus two, you're adding it to that and dividing by 0 0.001. Okay, so in calculus, all you have to do is, I'll show you something really quickly here. So we take derivatives and a derivative just means the rule for the derivative of x squared is you bring this number in front and you subtract one. So the derivative of x squared is two x. So that's your derivative. So for this one, the derivative would be six x because I'm multiplying by two, reduce the exponent by one. So I had six x minus four. So f prime x is going to be 6x minus 4, and then the prime, this gives you the slope of any function. So this would be 6 minus 4 is 2. So I know the slope is 2. That's just a little aside for you in case you want a little 
quick way to check. Okay, so find the point of tangency. So I need to know what's the y value when x is 1. So f at 1 is equal to 3 minus 4 minus 1. So 3 minus 4 minus 1 is minus 2. So that means the coordinates are 1 and minus 2. Okay, so once I have the coordinates, the last part of the question says here to find the equation of the tangent at x equals 1. Now, do you remember how to find the equation of a line? So you're going to use y equals mx plus b. And you have a point. So my x is equal to 1. My y is equal to minus 2. And my slope is equal to 2. So those are all the things you need to find the B value. I remember doing that over and over ad nauseum. Okay, plug it all in. So I have minus 2 is equal to 2 times 1 plus B. So that means B is going to be equal to negative 4. And therefore the tangent line is going to be Y is equal to 2X minus 4. Okay, so... That's how you find the equation of a tangent line. Um, it's not all that hard, right? You can do it. And again, if you want to try a little bit of calculus, it makes your life easy. Okay, so I hope that helps you out. That's the end of chapter four. Please subscribe. Um, I get a thousand subscribers. I'll do calculus and vectors for you. That's my bribe. Bye for now.